Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Crazy Dad's Garage. We're going to do another, essentially a will it start video here. Uh, we're going to, we're to the point on the Crazy Dad Rat Rod that uh, it's time to work on getting it started. I think I've got everything else together and now it's just putting the final touches on the engine, uh, taking some things apart, making sure they're... Uh, free and turning and everything like they're supposed to and, and all the different things that need to happen when you essentially start a new engine. However, this new engine in this uh, car that I've built is a new engine that was rebuilt 20 years ago and has been sitting on an engine stand in my shop until I put it in this truck and now it's been sitting in this truck for about five years. And so... Um, we're going it's you know we want to be careful when we go to start this thing and not just uh put a battery in it and start cranking on it um so this i got this engine uh from a friend who had me put it in a truck for him he had had a mechanic completely rebuild it for him so it's supposed to be brand new engine transmission same thing it was completely rebuilt um after he gave up on the project. I ended up trading him something for it, and uh, I've got it uh, sitting here. And I took it apart and detailed it with paint so that it would be a really cool uh, engine to stick in one of my projects. And we, you know, it's been sitting that way for years, and so it's never had anything done to it as far as it, it hasn't had oil in it when we put the thing together um, and detailed it. I uh, put it all together with assembly lube and everything um, which is a lightweight grease and uh, that's really the condition it's been sitting in all this time so I doubt if that grease has run off of things but uh, you know the oil that I use to put the pistons in the cylinders and things like that it's, I'm sure, kind of drained off and everything. And so, they're just things like that. We need to get oil circulating in it. Um, we need to be doing several different things. So I'm going to start walking you through that process. Uh, things you should do, um, some of these are things you should do when you start any new engine that's been rebuilt um, so that you get the break-in done properly. One of the big things in today's day and age is uh, the oils have changed and uh, we don't want to uh, wear a lobe off of a cam because the new oils don't have enough zinc in them for a flat tappet cam. Uh, most of your new oils are formulated for roller uh, lifters and for overhead cams and they don't require the same lubricating needs that uh, old motors do. So we need to do some things like that and uh, be able to, you know, just more things to take care as we put this motor together so that we've got a motor that should last us for 100,000 miles in the thing, which will effectively be the life of this truck because I'm sure it won't get driven that much. <clears throat> um, even though I intend to have a lot of fun with it, you know, it's not going to be my daily driver for sure, so... Anyway, um, we're going to launch into that. Um, I think some of the first things I'm going to do, I'm going to get it up on jack stands because I need to get under and access uh, the torque converter and I need to put a tranny or a belt housing cover on it and some things like that. I, I can't remember if I actually put bolts in the torque converter, so it may just be sitting there. That's one of the reasons i got to get under and look at it. So I'm going to start there. I'm going to pull the alternator off and go through and clean it up and refurbish it and paint it um, and then we will I'm, I'm going to get a battery in it and see if the starter works. I've had it um, hooked up to the battery charger and it kind of just getting a light click there so I'm not even sure well, I may not have had enough power to do anything but anyway we're going to hit that with uh, some full battery power and uh, May, may have to take the starter off and go through it. But then we'll walk through the process of doing a few other things. i got to put some sending units in it and uh, some different things like that. So anyway, we're just going to walk through that process 
and you get this puppy moving and uh, it really is a will it start video because we've never done it before on this motor and uh, so it's a will it start video it's a new start video a first start video those kind of things so all of that will be something that will hopefully be educational here as I walk through this process and uh, move forward on the project so we're going to get the thing on jack stands and get under there where we can check the torque converter out. Alright, got her up in the air and uh, let's crawl under there and see what we've got to work with on this thing. Let's see, alright. Get some light on the subject. There we go. No, it looks like I don't have the torque converter bolted up. And yes, it's going to require bolts, not nuts. So I'll have to find some of those. And let's see, I've got my cover here. Looks like I've got the bolts for it stuck in it, so I'll get those out. And uh, I just went to my stash of covers, and I've got several of them. So let's crawl out here and see what we can find. <laughs> yeah, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. I think we can surely find something that will work there. So we'll sort through those. I think my preference would be to use the metal one because it's kind of more in keeping with the car. I don't know, maybe even this really old gnarly looking one, but now nah, I want something better looking than that. But I may just clean up one of these plastic ones. They'll clean up real easily and um, looks like they're in decent shape. So, I don't know. We'll see. I'll get the bolts out and test fit a couple of them and see what looks like it's going to work. And then we'll be back and show you what we've got when we get that put together. So that's going to be our project. I probably have some torque converter bolts somewhere, but I may have to go buy some. So that's going to be where we'll leave it for the moment. i got to dig through all that stuff, and you don't want to watch me do that on film. So be back shortly. Okay, digging around in my bolt buckets, and lo and behold... There I find three bolts that are the right size and style with nuts on them. And uh, I suspect that they're torque converter bolts either out of this actual transmission or from some other thing I've taken apart. So I had them. That's excellent. Dug around, found one of these that will fit. Actually, out of that whole pile of them that I had over there, they're basically at least three different styles. There's uh, two or three bolt patterns on the way they bolt to the flange of the transmission and there's different hole patterns and everything else. So anyway, got us one that will fit. And so now we'll proceed to put all those bolts back in, put that cover on the bottom and then we'll be back to move on to the next step. Okay, here we go. We got those torque converter bolts all in and tightened up and now we're got that uh, cover on interestingly enough these are 10 millimeter headed bolts not American threaded so this must have been off of a very late model small block so anyway there we are we're in place got all that rigged up and uh, I'm happy. So now we move on to the next piece, which I'm not sure what I'm going to do. So I'll get up and do a little evaluating and then show you what I'm working on. All right, next little project and getting ready to go here. Um, these are coolant temperature sensing units. And uh, this one is the Chevy one that came out of my small block Chevy. And... Uh, uh, because I've got Ford gauges in the thing, I found myself a Ford sending unit. And it looks like it's going to go right in there and place the other one. So I'm going to put that in place. And then 
also will cut this pigtail off of the wire I got with it and I got to splice that into my wire here so that we get ourselves all hooked up and ready to go so I'll put that in place get it put together show you the outcome there okay there we have it got the sending unit in place with that pigtail on it that'll keep us with the loop thing here keep us away from the exhaust manifold got the wire run over here tied into the wiring harness so we're all set to go so that's the temperature sending unit now I gotta figure out the oil pressure because it's gonna require an adapter in size I think so I'll move on to that one and try to figure that out okay now we're gonna be working on getting the oil pressure sending unit in and it's gonna be a little bit more difficult it's back up in here where is it get my finger in the hole right there so hidden between the right on the back of the intake manifold it's actually on the block I guess in between there and the firewall and so we've got one slight problem and that is that the Chevy uh, oil pressure sending units are smaller diameter uh, pipe thread than the Ford sending unit so I've got this series of pipe fittings here so a little pipe nipple, a reducer, an elbow to go into my pressure sending unit. And I'm going to point it backwards because I've got a lot of space back in here to work with. I've probably got nearly six inches back in there. And when I try to go straight up, I'm hitting the uh, condenser that's attached to my coil bracket. And I don't want to try to move that when it's this simple. So I'm going to... Put some sealer on the threads of those things, get that all put into there, and I'll show you as I when I get it uh, put into place. All right, we got her in place back there. It's hard going to be hard to see, but you can see it back in there, <coughs> right here. And we got the wire hooked up to it. <coughs> Still had to take the coil loose to get to it to put the fitting in because it was hitting, but uh, yeah, there it is down there. So now we got an oil pressure sending in. That should be the major pieces of that sort of thing that I've got to do to the motor. So that should wrap me up there. And I will look at what we've got to do next, and I'll be back. Alright, a couple other things I did here, little things. I want to be able to see the timing mark on the balancer there, so I put some white paint in there. That's always a good idea when you're doing that. Um, so I got that where I can see it. I came up here. I wanted to make sure I got my firing order right. So this one has it uh, cast into the manifold right down there you can barely see it under that hose I'm not going to go out of the way to move the hose but there it is so I did that I went back to my distributor found plug number one and checked going around the cap and we've got uh, all the plug wires in the right place so we're good that way then I wanted to uh, see how things are working I've never had a good battery in this so I went out and got a battery out of the out of the crazy dead bump side, which was handy out here. Put it in place. And the other day when I was working just with the battery charger, wasn't getting anything at the starter. But uh, I uh, we still got the light on here, don't we? Well, anyway, so. Let's listen, see if you can hear it here, because... Ha ha ha, my starter works. Engine cranks over. That's an excellent sign. Okay, so that's got me... I was concerned I was going to have to take the starter apart and fix it. Uh, but it, obviously it's working. So 
Now, the one thing I'm going to do before I start putting fluids in and that sort of thing is I've got this alternator on here. And I think it's a good one, but I'm going to take it off and clean it up, take it apart, show you how to test it, and probably do a little painting on it and making sure that the bearings are completely free so it turns really nice because I want to have that uh, working correctly when I actually get the thing going. So I'm going to do that and I will walk you through some of the steps of that and then I think we'll be ready to put fluids in this puppy. So there we go. That's the next thing. Okay, this is an old General Motors uh, internally regulated alternator and these were the kind of the standard latest technology in the 70s and early 80s and uh, a lot of guys are saying you need to step up to the newer things to get a lot higher output on a lot of your street rods because we're running so much electrical stuff on them but this car is ultra simple and so we're not going to need a high output thing. We don't have electric fan, we don't have an electric fuel pump. Um, so far we don't even have much any stereo in it. So it really is pretty basic. Um, but this thing should be plenty effective. A lot of guys convert these to a one wire system where the only wire you have to hook up is here and these can get ignored. But I'm going to go ahead and hook my second wire up here just because I don't want to I uh, frankly don't know how to. I believe that you can just jump from here over to here and do it, but I don't. it doesn't matter to me. I've already got the wiring in place, so I'm going to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to use the air wrench to uh, get that nut off and then get the pulley and the fan off so that I can clean up and paint them. And then to disassemble this, there are four screws here, one there, one down here, and two more on the other side that match them. I'll get them pulled out, and that will allow the two halves to come apart right here. And uh, this uh, center thing here is, what is it, the, I forget what it's called, I think it's the stators. But anyway, it's the coils of wire that wrap around the, uh, the armature, I think, in the, in the thing and they should stay with one half of this I can't remember I think it's this half that they stay with so I'm gonna get it that far apart and then we'll start talking to you about how you go about testing one of these oh by the way this little tag right here tells me that this has been rebuilt at some time so this is probably not an original alternator with a ton of miles on it more than likely it's uh, probably in pretty good shape inside so I'm going to take it apart, test it out. Actually, that, those bearings sound better than I thought they did, but I want to get it looking nice. So I'm going to clean these up and paint them and probably clean this up and spray some silver paint on it too. So anyway, I'll go to that point and then we'll be back and describe to you what we're working on. Here we go. we got things apart now. Um, here's our pulling and fan right there. The nut and the washer that came with them. Uh, this is the uh, guts of the thing. We'll get to that in just a minute. Um, and this is the other half. You normally don't take this any farther apart because in order to do so, you've got to get that bearing out of there. So I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm going to try to get some oil down into that bearing just to make sure that it's clean. But you can see we got some crud down in it, so it's a good thing that we took it apart just to clean it up good. So we'll do that with that. That's not going to come any much any farther apart. There's our four bolts. We will clean them up and paint them. Now, here's where things get interesting in here. So, let's see if I can get the thing in the light here without blinding everybody. So we're going to take those three nuts off right there and that's going to allow this coil section to come out. And I get confused. I can't remember if this is the stator or the armature. I think the armature is the piece over in there. But anyway, we're going to, we're going to take those loose. That'll let this come out. 
Then we're going to take these three screws loose here to take this white part out, which is your brush holder. And I think this is the electronic part of the thing that has the regulator and things like that in it. And then we're going to take these two nuts off. There's a nut there. There's a screw down here, which you can't see for the light. But we'll take those loose. That will let us take this uh, resistor thing out of there. And we'll also get this little piece here, which is a diode that we need to test. We'll get it out. And we'll go to that point. Oh, we'll probably take that condenser out down there too. So we'll go to that point and show you how it looks like all blown apart. There we go. We got her all apart now. This is about as far apart as you really want to take one of these things. Um, but we've got all the parts and pieces out here on the bench. Um, like I said, you don't want to take the armature out of this housing. It, I don't even know how to. I know it comes out, but I haven't done it before. Uh, just a word of caution, be ultra careful with this thing. Those wires have a thin plastic coating on them that's an insulator. And the way that these get messed up is that insulation gets broken somewhere so the wires are touching or touching something else. So be careful with this. Uh, don't be using a wire brush on it or things like that. Um, just be careful and uh, that's part of the issue with it. So now I'm going to grab my multimeter and I'll show you a few tests that you can run on these things that will uh, help you determine if you're good. And interestingly enough, uh, the parts, um, this brush holder piece is available, this uh, regulator part's available, the uh, diodes are available, and uh, probably that condenser is, and I'm not sure about this piece, but I'm not sure that you really need it. But those are really the serviceable parts in the thing. If you've got a problem, with uh, the stator, the coils over here, you need to just chuck it and probably get another alternator. Um, although if you had two or three of these, you could make some match parts real easily too, and I've done that. But uh, that's that's really if you got a problem, it usually lies your brushes are worn out, your regulator's not working, or this diode uh, set has given up here. And uh, so I'm going to show you how to test those, and uh, then we'll. Clean this up and paint it and get it ready to go back together. Okay, so we're back here now. I've got my tester here, and mostly what we're going to be using here is the ohm meter function. So, um, and this is really all that matters. I don't understand the readings here as much as I should, but I do know when you touch these together, that goes to zero. That tells you that there is a connection there. And what we're looking for here will be opens where they're not touching and shorts where they're connecting. So that's what we're going to be looking for. We're going to test. Um, we'll start out with this stator here. And what we're looking for here is we don't want either of these three to be connected to each other. And we also don't want any of them to be connected to the body of it, the ground here. So we're going to check to see if they're connected with each other by putting one in there and uh, touching that, and that was connected. And that's connected, okay? Maybe they're supposed to be connected to each other, and, but they're not supposed to be connected here, any of them. Yeah, okay, that's, it's like it's been 20 years since I've done this, so, anyway. No connection, so none of them are grounded. I guess that's the main thing that we're after. Okay, so that, that checks out all good. What we're going to do is take the air compressor and blow all the crud out of it, and, uh, you know, maybe take something and touch this up a little bit like a file or something. I'm not going to, like I said, I don't want to get wire brush anywhere near this thin plastic here. So, we'll, that should be okay. 
Now, this is one that's interesting. This is a diode. A diode is an electrical piece that allows current to flow one way, but not the other way. So you have one of these for each of the coils on the stator here. And what should happen is um, an ohm meter, how, what it's doing is there's power from batteries inside the meter and it's sending it out through these wires and the other wire is trying to pick it up. So we're wanting to see if these are, have, they should have a connection one way and no connection the other way. And I'm showing no connection on either of the three that way. But then I'm going to switch and put my leads the other direction. This will have the electricity flowing the other direction. Now I've got a connection there. I have a connection there. And I do have a connection there. So that tells me that electricity is flowing one way through this thing but not the other way. And that's what we want to be happening with that. So that's good. So we'll take it and clean it up and put it back together. Now, um, this is the regulator, and I can't remember how you test it. Um, I'm curious here. So these are grounds that ground to the case. This metal part touches the case there, so we'll just see if we've got any kind of connection through that. And we don't, which is what I would have suspe suspected, and that's probably all we can find out with that. I can't remember, if, I don't remember that there was a testing procedure for that. I think if that's bad, the thing's just not working, and if you've made those tests, then it, it's probably going to be your regulator. But anyway, I'm assuming that this one's working. I don't know that, but we're going to keep our fingers crossed. Um, I don't think there's any tests I can perform on this. I think mostly it's a heat sink and I don't understand exactly that. So anyway, it looks like all our parts and pieces are good here. So I'm going to go about the cleaning process here. And again, this is just going to be my standard cleaning process. I'm going to do a lot of wire wheeling here and painting parts. Like I said, i got to be ultra careful here. I want to be careful these. Oh, let me talk about this for just a second. So this is your, your brush holder set here. And you can get these brushes uh, usually at an auto parts store or they can order them for you if you need to. They're supposed to be, so you can see the length there, that, that's you know a half inch or so long. They're supposed to be, I think it's about three quarters of an inch to an inch long. And so these are getting pretty well worn. Uh, they're still serviceable so I'm not going to worry about it right now, but I may dig through some of the other alternators I have and see if I got a replacement set of brushes for it. And I can put them in here. But anyway, there's a little bit of rust down in there, so I'm going to clean the springs just a little bit, and I'll show you how to put that back in too. So that's my next step here, is a bunch of cleaning and uh, painting. So I'll get all my parts renewed, and then we'll look at putting the thing back together. Okay, you can see I'm starting to put things back together in there. Got different pieces in there ready to go. So this uh, brush holder set, they have a little trick here that uh, you need to do with these things. So if you, you can get the brushes put back in place like I've got them in there, and then there are a series of holes in the case here that are designed specifically to have a wire go up through them and through those holes like that, and that holds those brushes in while you put it in place. Now, you can use a straight wire and just stick it in there and there is a hole in the case. Oops. Right there. That's designed for that to, to come out of. And what I'm going to do, rather than what I've got done here, I'm going to take my wire out, stick it up through the hole in the case, and then put it back in. Yeah, this is a little more complicated, but uh, I don't have a straight wire, so. Okay. 
There you go. So, got it in place there. Now I can put my whole assembly in place like that. And if you look close, you can see that wire sticking up right there. So I got that in place. Now, put my screws in there that go in there. Cinch it down. And, yeah. So I'm going to shut the camera off here and finish putting it together uh, without having to talk and think at the same time. Tighten down in there the way it's supposed to be. We got our paper clip hanging out there that's got the brushes in the right spots. And I did take, and down in that bearing, I just put uh, some grease down in there just to, you know, help it out. I don't think it was a problem, but we put it in there anyway. Now, we'll get our other side here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do a little more work on these. I've got some rust on these areas here where there shouldn't be. I'm going to take something and kind of knock that rust off before I put these back together. So I'll do that and then we'll come back here in just a minute. Okay, got that straightened up. Um, got rust cleaned off of there also. There's a little bit of grease build up in here so I cleaned that off. Now we're ready to put this back together and it's a pretty simple process. Now you can put the thing back together in any four positions around there just depending on where you line the bolts up. So I need to put it back in the uh, way that I've got things lined up for my wiring and everything. And I believe that that is right there. That looks correct. Alright, so once I got that done, I need to get my bolts put back in it, which I've still got out on the paint box, so I'll go grab them. I can pull this wire out now that lets the brushes go back to where it's, they're supposed to be. Now I'll go get my bolts and put in here and uh, whatever other little pieces need to be put back on it and we'll come back. Okay, we're back. We got everything back here with us, so let's get our bolts put back in there where they line up like they're supposed to. Yeah, we're gonna... This is just a process as you put things back together. It's the cool thing about these is it's pretty simple. Now, honestly, I've never had a Ford alternator apart or any of the newer ones or anything like that. Um, I'm guessing that it's pretty much the same sort of a procedure. Although, you know, some parts inside might be different and things like that. But, um, I suspect that they come apart just about as easily and uh, go back together the same. But, you know, that being said, just about anything will benefit from you taking it apart and cleaning it up if you're using used parts. And uh, I actually did have a, another alternator just like this one sitting over there and I tore it apart real quick thinking, well, maybe that brush set would be in better shape, but it wasn't. They were just about the same as this one. So we just went back together with the parts that we had and I think we're gonna be just fine. I like to do these things like this, especially the cleaning them up and painting them apart because it, this is what really can dress your car up and uh, make everything look a lot better than it did. So, all right, we've got a little spacer here that goes around the shaft and uh, the bearing and things in right there. So we put that on. Now we get our pulley in place. Look at that nice, pretty, shiny pulley. Or not pulley, the fan part. Pulley back on there. 
Look at that. Got all those contrasting colors. See how cool that looks? This makes a big difference. So, get that threaded back on. Get our air gun hooked up. to snug that pulley down. This is by far the best way to do this. You don't have to put a lot of torque on it, but it's, there's no real way to hold it. And that just uh, puts it in there and makes it work. So there we go, guys. And that looked a lot better than what it did. Looks a lot better. It's clean inside. Now we'll just go put it on. So we'll be back. I'm going to go bolt it back in place and I'll show you the finished product here. Alright, got her bolted back in place. There she sits. All cleaned up pretty and ready to go. It's way better than that grungy old thing that was sitting on there before. Plus it's kind of fun to have that red fan, some silver and some detail on the thing so that it actually looks like it was meant to be there as part of the dress up kit. So there we go. That's got that taken care of, and uh, we'll move on to the next piece, whatever that I decide that needs to be. Alrighty, here we are getting ready to put fluids in the motor and everything so we can get started. I put about five gallons of gas back in the gas tank, and then took my motor oil and dumped enough of it in there that I can now add this... Uh, Lucas Oil Zinc Additive um, to it. This is specifically formulated for flat tappet cams where most everything today has uh, roller cams or overhead cams um, so that they don't need it. The old camshafts need <coughs> to have this oil additive put in there to save the camshaft. So we get too many of them are going bad now because they just the oil didn't have the right lubrication qualities in it. So what I did is I dumped enough of my five quart container here into the motor that I could now take this and dump it in there because I want this stuff mixed in with the oil not just uh, poured into the same oil pan. So I'm going to dump it in here and then I'm going to shake it up real good before I pour the rest of it into the motor and that I think will help the process there. So. Just wanting to show you that. Make sure you get something like this. Um, unfortunately, it's expensive. This is like 20 bucks a bottle, and you're supposed to use a whole bottle every time you do an oil change. But uh, better 20 bucks a bottle than having to replace the cam lifters and all the havoc that that wreaks in one. So anyway, that's our plan here. I'm going to put this in, and we'll use this as our break-in oil, and uh, we'll go from there. Now. I know a lot of people say you're supposed to use a straight 30 weight, but you almost can't find it today. And what I've read is it's not a big deal to switch over and use something else. I decided to go with a 1030 instead of a 530, which is what I run in most of my other stuff. And uh, unless you have any raunchy comments about Walmart's oil, the Supertech brand, I'll tell you, my 04 Chevy Silverado has 300 and 40,000 miles on it and this is the only oil I've ever used in it and I'm not even real good about being religious about changing my oil and that motor runs like a charm and hasn't had any problems related to oil so I don't have a problem with putting this stuff in and uh, that's what I'm going to do here so I'll get back here after I get that oil in and we get ready for the next step okay Got my oil filled up and uh, filled the transmission up until it overflowed out the breather tube. So that's about all I can go on that right now. And uh, got that ready to go. Now next, I've got to prime this thing. And so I've pulled the distributor out. Got it laying down here on the ground. And the best way to prime one of these things is to get yourself an old distributor and strip it out, clean everything off. 
Uh, I've taken this one and I've ground three flats on that shaft so that it'll chuck up in my drill real well and the drill can bite onto it. I use a half inch drill to drive this thing. Then I came down here and ground all of the teeth off of the gear that engages with the camshaft. And uh, this then I can stick down in there and engage that oil pump drive and put my drill on it and spin it until I get oil flowing everywhere. And that's what I'm going to be after here. Now, you can say, well, why don't I just get a shaft that will go down there and, and drive that shaft down where this meets up to it. And the answer is because these things have some oil passages in the engine that come and they need to be blocked off by these uh, places right here. And uh, that lets the oil flow through these grooves. I think it's this one, but it may be this one. Um, and lets it flow through there into the other oil passages. And if you leave this out, the distributor body out, then it pumps it up to this point and stops, and it won't pump anymore. And so that's why this is uh, going to be a uh, good and useful tool. I had to make one when I did a small block Chevy a while back, and so I just have made it and kept it in my toolbox. and. Here we go, we'll be using it again today. So, in order to do that, obviously you got to have your old distributor out. And then we're going to just set this new one down in there. Go gentle so that you don't mess things up. And then you know, twist this around until you actually, there, get the shaft. And at that point, we know we're good to go. So I've got some arrows drawn inside of there. That tells me which way I need to spin this thing so that I get the oil pump to actually pumping up instead of pumping oil out of the engine. So I'm going to hook my drill up and we'll get it spinning and uh, get this thing primed and ready to go. Okay, we're ready to go. So I'm going to let her rip here. So what you're looking for here, I'm going to turn that on and let it run here in a minute. About the only place you can see in here is you want to look down in your valve cover and you're looking for evidence that you got oil moving down in there. That's when you'll know that uh, you've got the thing primed the way that it needs to be. So normally you just run it until you got oil showing up there. I'm going to actually lock the drill in the on position and then uh, just let it run for a while. Because I want this thing as oiled as I can get it all the way through that entire oiling system. And that will let me keep an eye on what's going on down here in the valve cover too. So you could also um, check your gauge inside, your oil pressure gauge, and see if you've got oil pressure building up on the gauge. Um, I'm still not 100% sure that mine works, so we're going to go check that out while we got it going too. So we'll be back when we are sure we've got this thing primed. Okay, we ran it. We had pressure on the, showing on the oil gauge inside, which was a good thing. We uh, had oil down in the valve cover where we could see it, so I've pulled the dummy distributor out right down there. Now we're getting ready to put the new one or the good one back in. And to do that, you need to get your number one cylinder which is this one over here, it's a driver's side front cylinder, it needs to be at top dead center on its compression stroke. And so I've gotten in there and I bumped um, the starter over with my compression gauge in the number one cylinder until I started to get a compression reading on it. So I'm just over 50 pounds there, so I know that cylinder's coming up and making compression. So I went over here, And that, there's my white mark on the balancer down there. You can barely see it. So 
So I've got to continue rolling that in a clockwise direction until we get it over here to where we can see. Let me see if this light helps anything. Yeah. So down in there. There we go. There's a pointer with some arrows on it. And uh, some numbers. So we're going to roll that line to where it's at the zero marker on top dead center. So I'll get that to that point, then I'll be back and show you what to do next. Okay, we got that done. So we got our top dead center mark on the zero line, which you can't see if I can get in there any closer. Where'd we go? There. And I get a different angle here. Okay, so the deepest part of that uh, V right there is the zero marker on this motor. So I've got that set right on zero. Now I'll tell you a couple things about distributors for those of you who are new to the game. So I took this and I checked it while it's out of the car to make sure that my points are opening. I've got uh, some old grease on the just the points cam right there so that uh, that will stay lubed up. Um, here's a couple things to know. So if you wonder which way your distributor's turning, um, look at the way that the vacuum uh, advance can goes on there. Let me get this set up here. So. The vacuum advance can is on this side of the main circle of the distributor, right? So what you do is you pretend like that you hooked a water hose up here and you squirted water in that vacuum advance. Don't do that. Just think in your brain this way. If you squirt water in there, which way is it going to, let's see, which way is it going to go around this circle? It's going to go that way, clockwise, right? Well, that's the way your distributor will turn is clockwise on this GM. Now some other makes you might have vacuum advance on this side which means if you shot water in there it would go clockwise around that circle and so that's the way your distributor will turn. Alright so that's what you want to know. The second thing is that I've got a mark on the body of the distributor right here. That's where my number one cylinder is on the distributor cap. So I know that for sure. So now, what I'm going to do is I put that, uh, actually as you put that um, gear down in the hole to engage with the camshaft, it's got a spiral gear on the bottom that engages with a spiral gear on the cam. And so you're going to have to put the thing in way ahead of where you want it because as it goes down and engages, that gear is going to turn this hopefully to where it comes over and lines up with your mark there. And so that's what we're shooting is to get, um, to when we put our distributor in, that the point on the um, rotor here sits down and ends up lining up basically with your number one cylinder mark or at least to where you can rotate the distributor housing and get it to line up. And that's where we're going to go next. So. The reason that I want to do that, my theory on this is I'm going to drop this thing in here and I'm going to line up this rotor to where it's just a little bit after top dead center. Because the engine's on top dead center and remember that your distributor is set up to fire before top dead center, which would be over here. But we're already after top dead or at top dead center, so we're past where it's supposed to be firing. So I'm going to set it up a little bit after top dead center, and that's where I'm going to use it to try to start with. So we will move there. I'll get the distributor stuck in the hole, and you have to bounce it up and down a few times until you get not only these marks to line up, but till you get the gear on the bottom to engage with the oil pump drive shaft correctly and seat all the way down to here. Um, if you're still sticking up uh, 
quarter to three eighths of an inch, then you're not engaged with the uh, oil pump drive shaft yet. So I'm going to do that off camera, partly because it's a two-handed pain in the butt job, and partly because you don't want to hear me say any inappropriate words on this video. So I'll be back when I get that distributor in and lined up to that point. We are in place now, and I have the point of my rotor lining up with my mark down here, and they're pretty much right in alignment right there. I'm up against the manifold, so I'll give it just a touch, and that'll uh, have me with the timing surely in the ballpark. So, ready to put this back on. So get that in place. And then we'll be back. I'm going to pull the lid off the carburetor, dump some gas down in there, and hook our battery up. And we're actually ready to try this thing. So we'll see what happens. Okay, I've been in there playing with it a little bit, trying to start it. And what's happening is I'm still backfiring through the carburetor. So that tells me that I'm advanced too far and uh, what's happening is down here the so I can move this distributor the, uh, the closer I move it over this way the better it runs or tries to start but it's not enough that it'll keep running so I'm gonna pull that distributor out and move everything one notch over um, this direction and that should put us in a position where we can actually pull the trigger and run. So we're working on that right now, and I'll be back to show you as I get closer. Okay, here we go. I actually moved that um, two notches because I got to thinking that that's probably going to be closer to where it needs to go here. And so we've got that. we uh, got a little gas in the carburetor. Let's go see what we get done here. Will it start? Who knows? There we go. Let's see if we get in there where we can at least see the fan turning, right? There we go. Oh, cool. It's running. for for 20 years and especially for the last five as we put this thing together so I suspect well I know we're gonna have to get the timing set right on it I suspect that that carburetor is gonna need to be pulled apart and cleaned a little bit something acted like it wasn't uh, pumping when we stepped on it so the accelerator pump may not be working right and it could have some crud down in it so anyway it runs guys there we go so yeah I'm gonna stop right here for the moment and I will go mess around with that carburetor and uh, take it at least take the top off of it clean it up see what she looks like inside make sure we get gas going where we need to and then we'll have to get out a timing light get the timing set and then it'll be time to get some cooling in it check the fluid in the transmission and shucks we'll be ready to take this puppy for a drive <laughs> all right i will be back when we get that carburetor cleaned up 
Well, boys and girls, we were having fun. We got the radiator filled up, and we're working on tuning it up, and it quit. So I walked around and restarted it, and my timing light fell down and hit the fan and bent the blade and took out the radiator. So we are at a stopping point tonight till I can find a new fan and a new radiator. And... I guess we will keep you posted and let you know how that works. Anyway, talk to you again shortly. Yeah, that was a fail. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and put this video up because I think that's half the fun of YouTube and the videos is when we make mistakes and we screw up, <laughs> might as well let everybody know. I think everybody will get a kick out of it. Anyway. It's, I am thrilled with the way this thing's turned out. It started right up, you know, just a little bit of tweaking on that distributor. And uh, was running pretty good. Needed some tuning. I, I never did get to the carburetor yet. But, uh, yeah, I got it to where it would run and idle and things. And, and I think we're just not getting an accelerator pump shot in the carburetor. But anyway... That's all going on a side burner right now till I find myself a new radiator and a stinking new fan. So, yeah. I will be talking to you down the road, but I think I'm going to go ahead and throw this up. A will it start video? Yeah, it started alright. Got her going. Everything was looking smooth. But vent fan blades and radiators, they just don't mix well. So, oh well. Hope you enjoy it. I really appreciate it. you guys would like and subscribe to the video, and, and if you've had fun with it, share it with somebody else, because it helps us out in building our channel here, and we're grateful for all the comments that we've had, we're thankful that everybody's having fun, seems to be watching the videos, and so, hope you enjoy, have a great day, Beep. learn from my mistakes, ha, talk to you soon, bye.